This ad is brought to you by Read More Comics, where you can find comic books, graphic novels, and more. Don't know, son of that dark phantom. Still Valentine's Day. Well, technically. But yeah, it's month of love. I'm still gonna talk about something else that could make, must be cheering me up. I know just the one. And it's something I talked about last Valentine's month. And here we go. What is up guys, me again, and that's right, I'm going to talk about Sailor Moon's first movie. Well, it's called, not as Sailor Moon R, the Rose of Power, I believe. Yeah, I'm just going to call it Sailor Moon R, the movie. I never got that kind of thing, but the R, R thing anyway. But anyway, the movie itself, let's talk about it. It stars, of course, our favorite Sailor Centuries. And keep in mind, I'm going to talk about the child-friendly version from Deke. Not the other version, you know. Uh, yeah, those. Anyway. Anyway, I'm also, unfortunately, can't find any clips on the internet, unfortunately. But, I will have shown images, anyway. Because, all the other reasons, you know, copyright claims swarming like vultures, you know. Anyway, the movie stars, of course, Sailor Moon and the others. It's alongside her man crush... Darian, aka Tuxedo Mask. That's kind of an odd name. It's like calling a guy "man awesome" or something. But anyway, like we see these two lovely couple who originally can't stand each other, but uh, they eventually got got together. Yeah, I hadn't seen that before. All right, go all out, out on a play date with their friends. That's along with the other Sailor Scouts: a Sailor Mars, Sailor Jupiter, Sailor Mercury, and Sailor Venus. My personal fave. And, ugh, that's the most obnoxious brand all of anime, in my opinion. I don't even know why she existed. Her name is Sailor Cherry Moon. Hmm, wonder why they call her that. Now, if there's one character I flat out don't like in this series, it's Sailor Cherry Moon. Apparently, she's Sailor Moon and Tuxedo Mask's daughter from the future. And, for some reason, she has a crush on her own father from the future. That's just messed up. Uh, and... Apparently she wants to get together with him. Well, I've seen other versions like that. Well, out, this is outside of the Deke fandom, but anyway. Yep. Uh, she's, to me, she's an obnoxious little brat. And do you know what she did in the movie? Do you want to know what she did in the movie? Nothing! Absolutely nothing! She contributed nothing of value in the movie, except to get it saved by Sailor Moon. And later in the movie, she did motivate Sailor Moon... I want to go in and save the day hey, after Darren gets kidnapped in a later scene. Hey, but come on, either one of her friends could have said that. Heck, even the talking cats would have said that. And in fact, heck, you could have taken her out of the movie, give her a line to one of the others, and nothing would have changed. I'm sorry, I'm sorry for that little rant, but to me, she's like the Webby of this franchise. Well, the old Webby, not the new cool Webby. Hey, anyway. Yeah, I just don't flat out like her. I mean, you could have took it out of this franchise, and nothing would have changed. At all. I guess uh, time traveling has uh, not been the best part on me. I suffer trunks in anime. That was cool. Anyway, yeah. Uh, I think we're talking about it enough. Let's just move on. So now uh, this elf looking dude with a mullet and a talking flower. Uh, it has come to Earth, though, of course, take over the world. Well, destroy it, actually, but yeah, they're pretty much the same thing. And, well, he has some sort of guy crush on a tuxedo mask. I don't know why. And don't worry, fellas, I don't judge. Anyway, he's actually being controlled because he's weak-minded and being controlled by this chick. Some sort of flower lady who wants a drain of Earth of energy. Why is she doing this? Well, to sustain herself. Yeah, that seems like a pretty good motivation. And instead of just doing it because... Just because. But, it's up to the Sailor Sentry to stop her. So after she unleashes her plans, 
and Sailor Moon, Sailor Venus, Sailor Jupiter, Sailor Mars, and Sailor Mercury all, all transform and team up to defeat the evil flower. And and the action scenes were pretty spot on here. And, well, I'm really not sure who does the fight choreography on this show, but it's pretty decent. And the Sailor Scouts use their powers and skills and unleash their full frontal attacks. And, of course, they always shout their attacks, anime style and Harry Potter style. You know, they shouldn't shout their... You know, sometimes I think they shouldn't shout their attacks, otherwise their opponents could be more aware and become more prepared if to block the attacks or something. I never got that. Yeah, it's like me going all... Oh! <laughs> and anyway, in the mix of the fight, the Sailor Sentries, minus Sailor Moon, got captured. And, and we got a ta- backstory to the main villain. He's not doing this because he's evil. It's because he's doing it because he wants to please a friend. And he wants to be, he doesn't want to be alone. Because he was outcast and ridiculed. And he said he that they don't know how it feels to be like that. Actually, they do. All the centuries knows how it feels to be cast out and left out. Uh, as we see the past of the Sailor Centuries minus Sailor Moon. And saw her leave an impact on the rest of the team. And befriending these misfitted outcasts. Guardians of the Galaxy style. <laughs> wow. These girls went from nobody who cares about. To the most heroic heroines in all of fiction. And the Sailor Centuries. They're always sitting together as friends. Hmm. I get the feeling My Little Pony drew inspiration from this. But later. Her Sailor Moon and her friends managed to free the guy from the evil flower. But the a- an asteroid is about to hit the earth. So our group of heroes. Heroes, well, group of heroines plus one hero, oh, must unite their power to save the day. With Sailor Moon, u- Sailor Moon using that special magic gem thing on her, that's what she wears. Uh, anyway, anyway, to stop the comet from hitting the Earth. And so, s- the Sailor Sentries and Tuxedo Mask managed to save the day. And from stopping at the comet from hitting the Earth. But at a cost of Sailor Moon's life. Because we once heard from the show that if Sailor Moon uses that thing, she will die. I'm not totally serious, she will die. And there was a pretty touching emotional scene seeing the Sailor Sentries and Tuxedo Mask seeing their friend die. Saying that she was the glue that held the group together. It was so emotional and mature. And I was like, and then I realized, gee, a main character that dies in the movie, in their first movie? Oh gee, she must be really dead. That one magical kiss from Tuxedo Mask, a fairy tale Disney style, and she's back to life. Not that I'm complaining, and it was an emotional scene nonetheless. And then, honestly, yeah, I think my little point in the movie was missing out on that. And I mean, how could they have that? Then have that? I mean, I know it would have been predictable, but at least it still could have been a lot more emotional. Not that I'm complaining; it's still a good flick. But anyway, yeah, that's the end of the movie. Was as we see. He said the moon come back to life, all their friends united with glee. Hey, and one question still remains. Are they gonna get back to Earth? That's when they're sitting on an asteroid. Hmm. Well, they can just teleport out. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they can do that. They show they can do that. They can teleport Power Ranger style. And anyways... But anyways... The first Sailor Moon movie. And? It was pretty good. I recommend to all you Sailor Moon anime fans. Well, the movie wasn't groundbreaking or one of the greatest anime films of all times. But, it was still a decent flick. Unfortunately, it suffered the same problem that other anime films based off of movies... Well, other anime films that were based off of cartoon shows are, are at. I mean, and they weren't that, that much of a big impact on a lot of people. Kind of like the first Transformers movie and the Affirmation My Little Pony movie. But... It was still a decent flick, nevertheless. And I, overall, I give this a... 7 out of 10. It would have been better, but it was still decent, nonetheless. That's all for today, guys, and see you all next time. Farewell, friends. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to check us out on Patreon, Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, FanFiction.net, Rattled, and Casting Call Club.